Hi guys. Hey, it's been a week or two. Sorry. Um, things are just crazy out of hand, but that's all right. Hey, um, want to talk to you for a few minutes. I entitled this, um, the, um, the encounter, the experience, the instruction and the increase. And I'm taking it from the book of Acts because there's a shift coming right now. There's a huge shift. Things are starting to come undone. They're being unraveled. And the reason why they're being unraveled is because God is building his church. Okay? This isn't something that man, man is going to do. It's going to be something that God pours out his spirit. And I'm looking at the second chapter of Acts, which we're all, a lot of us are familiar with that, right? And it talks about when they were gathered together in the very first uh, verses it talks about they're gathered together in a room and they were in one accord that meant they were in agreement they were all in agreement and waiting with uh proactive waiting for some sort of an encounter something to happen and then it said suddenly all right so this is where we are we're in the suddenly times suddenly there came a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind and the whole house was filled where they were sitting and it said there appeared to be a divided tongue. So they were had tongues of fire over their head. They began to speak in tongues, which is a heavenly language, by the way. Um, you know, I got filled with the Holy Spirit right after I got saved. So I didn't have any uh, buddy telling me different. You know, it just was an experience. It was something, it was an encounter that led to an experience, right? And I knew that it was God. I knew that that was exactly what I needed to do. And I knew that it was from heaven. And then I researched what was happening to me because I was brand new in the Lord and I didn't really know. I didn't know anything about the Bible really. And so um, this began to happen to me in the 70s. And then there was an instruction that was given. There was an encounter that led to an experience. And with the experience, people were in awe. They were in shock and awe. They had, they were like grabbing on going, my goodness, it's this rushing mighty wind, this crazy thing that happened. While they were together waiting proactively waiting for an experience from heaven, an encounter from heaven that led to an experience, which can't be forgotten, okay? When you have an experience with the Holy Spirit, you can't just pretend like it didn't happen, all right? We saw this happen many, many, many times to people that didn't believe in God at all, right? So then they had an encounter, and the encounter that led to the experience. And then Peter stood up and he began to describe what was happening according to Joel 2, uh, 28. And then he said, I like this part here where he said, um, verse 34, it said, for David did not ascend into the heaven, but he himself said, the Lord said, listen to this, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies uh, your footstool. Sit at my right hand. In other words, don't be hasty. So this is the instruction. Don't be hasty. Sit here with me. You're seated with me in heavenly places. So sit with me here until I make your enemies your footstool. In other words, he's going to fight the battle. He's going to take over. He's going to take over what's going on right now. And he's going to fight that battle. And then it went on to say, that this is where I really like this because this is where we're headed, all right? So what happened was there was this encounter that led to an experience, that led to instruction, that led to an increase. And the increase happened when they said, you know what, we're not going to let go of this. In other words, we have to be good stewards of the encounter that we have. We have to be good stewards of, of what God has allowed us to be our partaker of. He's, he's let us see something. He's let us experience something. And we have to be really good stewards of that. And then it said that they went daily with one accord, again, all together to, uh, to the temple, breaking bread from house to house. All right? So they went from the temple to breaking bread, eating around a table, uh, from house to house and ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Now, we're coming into a time of a great revival and a great harvest. Can God trust us with people that he wants to send us? Can he trust us to be family with people we've got nothing in common with? Can he trust us 
to eat with them and to have fellowship with them and to become a family, to become a, a group and a unity together that we just accept people and we love them and then they begin to come out of their entangled messes and they begin to let go of, they repent. Uh, Peter was talking about repent. What do I have to do? Repent and turn, like turn away. But you've got a community of people where you've got a safe place. you got a safe spot because repentance is... It's an act on your part, but it also takes time oftentimes. And another thing is that there's been a lot of crap going on in the churches, man. I'm finding out and hearing all kinds of stories from things from all over the place, you know, of, of things that have been happening. And we haven't been treating people the way that God would want them treated. And there's been a lot of abuse and different things like that. I mean, I hear that in the adult conventions from young girls that have gotten into porn who used to be in church. I mean, that's just the facts. And so... You know, I'm I'm watching and I'm I'm I guess my question is my question is are are we soil are, are is our heart is our community are we soil to where God can add to the church daily those who are being saved because if they're going to come in in every kind of shape that they're in from every kind of woundedness that they've encountered and endured every kind of trauma every kind of disappointment and, and they, they trusted and then their trust was broken and things begin to happen and they were completely shattered and they come in and they're afraid, they're, they don't trust now, you know, and, and so they're coming in from every walk of life. They've gotten themselves into this lifestyle or that lifestyle or this one. Are we willing, are we able to become family or community with them? Are we willing to go from house to house and break bread with them with simplicity of heart? You know, we're not like on a stage. We're not like pumping anything. We're not trying to, to sensationalize anything or market anything. It's just simplicity of heart. It's like a simple, a simplicity, just a, a family type of a thing in an environment where people can come in and there's a safe place for them to say, you know what, this happened to me and this wasn't right. And you can go, absolutely, it was not right. It was not right that that, that is not what God means for you. That is not his intent for you. That is not his purpose for you. And it was painful and it hurt you. And so we are we are repenting with them. We're like, we're sorry. It's almost like identification or repentance. I am so sorry as pastors that you went through that experience because that was never meant for you, right? Because if our soil is right in our community, in one accord, where people are all in agreement together that we're not trying to make something bigger than what God's trying to do. We're just family. We're just community together, breaking bread from house to house. Then God can give you the increase. He will give to you daily, it says. The Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved because they could feel that they could trust and that same experience that we just went through with the encounter with the Holy Spirit was, was absolutely powerful enough to bring them to a place where they said, I got to have somewhere to get healed. I've got to have somewhere where I can go. You know what we did? We had this inner city church in Salt Lake City, and it was so great. We talked about this this weekend at our um, Doing This Stuff conference, and I didn't expect to go there, but I did. And, and it was downtown Salt Lake, and we had every kind of walk of life coming in there, and that's no joke. We had cross-dressers. We had people that were in same-sex lifestyle. We had people that were just out of prison. We had people that were drug dealers and all kinds of different things coming in. But what we did on, on Thanksgiving is that we didn't have Thanksgiving in our homes we brought all of our Thanksgiving dinners to the church because <laughs> we had a great big, like, I don't know, kind of like a uh, basketball arena looking thing, you know, like a gym type thing. And we just set up tables and we brought all of our food there and invited everyone to come and eat. And everyone did. And it was really funny because we had people there who didn't expect to be eating next to some guy that just got out of prison that looks like he's going to, you know, spare change him or, or knife him or something, you know, right? And yet it was community and God blessed it. And God brought people to us and he brought people to us that would never go anywhere else. And we had some religious people who said, you know, well, you can't have this kind of stuff in your church. And I said, where would you rather than be? I mean, you know, they got to have a safe place. They got to have somewhere where, where they can come and they can be whole and they can be made whole and they can feel like they're a part of something and they can feel like, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get whole here and I can trust and, and let them tell their stuff. 
And God's bringing correction right now to the church. It, uh, judgment always starts at the house of God first, just so you know. If there's junk going on, I'm telling you from 40 years of this stuff, if there's stuff going on in your in your life, in your church, as, as you as leaders, people that are in, appointed to leadership and teachers, you are held to a higher standard and God will keep you there. And if, if you've got to repent, you've got to make it right, you have to be able to say, I screwed up, I did this wrong, I, I defiled you, I made things, I, I, I treated you, mistreated you wrong. A lot of them are sexual offenses. Let's just get real. I mean, it's true. And I'm hearing it over and over and over again. And so God's cleaning house and he's bringing people. He's bringing us into a time now where he's saying, I'm going to do something in your day. I'm going to bring about a correction. I'm going to make safe places. And then I can trust you. I can trust you. I will add to you daily people that are being saved because I can trust you with my friends. I can trust you with my people that have been hurt. I can trust you with people who have been so beat up and so misbetrayed and they have been mistreated in the name of the Lord. And I can bring them to you and then you can show them my heart and I will make your enemies. You can sit right here with me in heavenly places until I make your enemies your footstool. I will defeat every kind of thing that comes against you. You know what God told me when I started doing outreach? He said, if you take care of my kids and my family, I'll take care of yours. That's what he said. You take care of my family and I'll take care of yours. So we're in that time right now where things are coming down. We might as well just get used to it. It's going to happen. And the best thing anybody can do is repent. Just repent. Get on your face and tell God, look, I blew it. I'm sorry. I, I knew that, that it, it, you know, I, 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 I just need for you to re forgive me. And I'm turning away. And at that moment, God forgives you. And then there is a point of restitution where you go back and you make it right with someone. You go back and you make it right with the person that you hurt. And that's a tough thing to do. You have to swallow your pride and you have to say, you know what, I'm going to make it right. Because, because the, the, the real church is, you know, when someone has to transition or they're getting ready to leave or they're going to be repositioned in another location or whatever from a church position, they're still family. They're still family. If, if they leave and you never have any communication with them, then you were never family to begin with. You know, we, we are in a kingdom. We're not in a church thing, right? We're not, we don't belong. Some say, I'm, you know, I'm a... Peter, some say I'm a, you know, what I, uh, it's just, you, we are, we are a kingdom together. We're a kingdom together that, that is saying we want to be the right soil. We want to be the right group. We want to be the right, um, type of, of, of heart that says you can bring them in here, God, you can bring them in here. You just show me what to do. You, you teach me and, and let your beloved pour through me and, and give me a grace and give me insight into what you need for us. And let us be the safe place. Let us be the safe place for people to come into. So this is a, a suddenly thing. <laughs> when the Holy Spirit comes in, in a way that we're getting ready to see, people say you are in revival. Some yeah, little 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 bits and pieces, you can begin to see it and feel it. But I'm telling you, there is going to be a huge uh, s a s shift coming very soon, very suddenly, and it will be undeniable. You won't be able to say it didn't happen. It did happen. And so you have the encounter, you have the experience, you have the instruction, and then you have the increase. Those are the four things that God will do in this day. So... As a pastor, as people who have pastored before, I just want to say pastors are called to a higher standard. We are, we are to shepherd the sheep in a loving way. We are not supposed to be lording over them. We are not to be pointing fingers and, and condemning people and making them feel bad. You're to embrace and bring a safe place and bring them to a point where they want to repent. If they don't want to repent when they come in, if they don't want to repent, they still want to continue their lifestyle, they can do that. They just can't do that within your church, right? They can't do that within your community. So you, you, know, you just have to give them the idea that, listen, I, I, I want to love you and I want to bring you into a place where you have a safe place 
And God, you know, you got to remember, some of them are on the installment plan, a little bit now and a little bit later, right? So they're coming in, uh, you know, checking it out. They don't trust. So um, the best we can do is become sim simple-minded, come a simplicity of heart with praising God, and God gives you favor when all that happens and with all the people, and then the Lord sees that you're good. He sees the soil's good. He sees that you've got the right ingredients and components from his kingdom, the way that he's designed it. And then he can add to the church daily those who are being saved, right? All right. So I just wanted to leave you with that because we were talking about it this morning a little bit and I thought, oh, that's a good one. I'm going to I'm going to go with that because we've got to have the encounter, the experience, the instruction and then God gives the increase. So if you're in a place of leadership and you you know that you've blown it and you just just make it right, right? Make it right. I mean, if, if you don't make it right, God's going to remove you. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I've just seen it too many times. So I, I, I love you guys and I just know that God's saying, look at this is a real st strategic, a specific time right now. We have got to pay attention to what's going on. We have got an enemy that is after everyone. He is after people to try and destroy. He kills. He comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy, right? We've got giants faced now that we've never faced before. So the Lord is telling us, look, I, I need you to be pure in heart. I need for you to, I need, just stay with me. Sit right here at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. That's where you get the authority and bam, it'll happen. All right. Love you guys. Um, had to catch up with you. Uh, be sure and go to my YouTube channel, Charisma, and also, um, um, oh, my website, cindymcgill.org. Go to cindymcgill.org. Uh, sign up for some of the classes that we have coming up. We're going to start doing some things uh, that are free, too. We're going to start doing kind of a lot of kind of a church thing, you know, I think, I think, I don't know. We've got some ideas that are floating around. So um, we're going to try and get to all of you because we know it's hard to travel. Uh, for those that came to the Doing the Stuff, we also are going to send you out the uh, the audio, uh, the vid maybe video parts of the training that went on there. We're also going to do a little demonstration because we didn't really get to that. Um, and we're going to do a demonstration uh, of how you uh, use the different uh, menu items, you know, and how you're able to communicate with people so um we be watching for that we have your emails and and we'll be sure to send that out all right um i just want to say we love you guys and i i just am passionate about what god's doing right now and i want to be that kind of place i want to be that kind of community where god can give us the increase um because these people need help and they need love and they need just like we need love you know we need love too i mean it's like you know we're not just always the caregivers we're like we need it too, but we get it from him and we get it from each other. And so we just need to guard our love in this hour toward one another. It's really important. All right. Um, talk with you soon. Hey, no nonsense here. Saying it like, tell it like it is. All right. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.